Hi everyone, this is Fake Life, and this is your Week 3 Wrap-Up for the Mr. Hadwick Championship Invitational Season 1. So since we're at Week 3, that means that we're almost halfway done with the tournament right now, and we have four new games to report on. First was Six-Legged Spiders Dark Elves vs. Heavy Weapons Gentlemen's Orcs. Six-Legged Spider won that one 1-0. One Next was Tortoise Dwarves vs. Your Tall Ones Dwarves, the last mirror match of the tournament, and they drew 1-1. One -one. Walrus's Orcs played against Gilkis Humans, and Walrus's Orcs won 2 to 1. And finally, a Sad Panda's Amazons beat Ekithump's Corn Demons 2 0. That means that the standings look like this. In first place, tied for first, we have Walrus and a Sad Panda at 7 points. And then a big three way tie for third with 4 points between Six Legged Spider, Torta, and Ekithump. And then down in 6th, 7th, and 8th, we have Heavy Weapons Gentlemen, Gilki, and Uratal 1. So let's take a look at the teams real quick and see what's changed. Um, Walrus didn't get any new levels or anything like that. His game, he won it 2-1, um, to one, but it ended up being really closer than he probably would have wanted due to some last-minute tackles near the end zone that almost caused him to not score that winning touchdown. So it got a little scary for him, but he pulled it out. Nothing new here. Um, he's still got three really awesome blitzers. He's rebought his fourth, so he's no longer down that fourth blitzer. And he's definitely going to love having the last blitzer on the team as opposed to some loner going in in all these games. And other than that, he's at team value 1150. He is, by a good margin, the highest team value team in the league, and his level ups are really great. So I see no reason why I can't say he's the one to beat at the moment. He's definitely up there. And second is Sad Panda's Amazons, who actually have only one skill up, but are also two wins, one draw, no losses. The one skill up is Block on a Line Woman, and he's still in the situation where he's got five guys now who have five SPPs, so at any time he could break out and get two, three, four, five levels in a game, depending on how good it goes for him, but he's not there yet. Fortunately, it's working out fine for him. He's won two games and he's got a draw, and he's actually faced one of his dwarf opponents so far. So, not too much interesting to talk about in terms of level ups or players or anything like that, but things are going real great for him. Next is Six-Legged Spider. This is his Dark Elves. So we had one more death in the league, which was one of Six-Legged Spider's linemen, and unfortunately I believe this was the lineman of his that had kick. So that was a very unfortunate loss. He's got a level on a blitzer, which he hasn't taken up yet. Um, you know, Dark Elf Blitzer, probably going to get something like block, or I mean dodge to go with his block, or guard if he rolls doubles. So it's a good piece to get a level up. The unfortunate part is other than that he's got a lineman at 5 SPP and a couple of spare random SPP sitting around so it's going to be a while before he gets any more levels unless he has a real breakout game and a lot of his SPP were on this guy who just died. Other than that he hasn't actually gotten enough money to buy a third reroll yet which is also not quite where you want to be. He has his apothecary now which is great but no reroll. So he's still got it a little rough, despite the fact that he's in that big tie for third place right now. I'd like to see him pull it out, I... my Dark Elves. So next is Tortoise Dwarves. As you may recall, Tortoise Dwarves were the one with the runner with pass and accurate. And we saw some passing in his game against Uratal One, but we also saw Uratal One injuring a lot of his guys. So... He's going to be out two guys in his next game. One is a blocker with a movement down, which isn't the end of the world. Obviously, three movement is ridiculously bad, but he's probably just going to get stuck in the line. The more important and pressing injury is a minus movement on this runner, which is pretty tragic. Um, it's not necessarily... It's not the end of the world. He may keep him just because it's 
really hard for the dwarf cage to run very fast anyway. But it means that he's basically, if this runner's the one carrying the ball, he's going to need to get one square closer in order to make his breakaway for a touchdown. So it's up to him. If he fires that guy, I wouldn't be too surprised. And if he keeps him, I wouldn't be surprised either. But his um, runner picked up another SPP for a pass. He's still chugging along. And other than that, he's got a couple of blockers with 5 SPP who have a chance of leveling up and a lot of Troll Slayers and Blitzers in the 2 and 3 range. So, you know, he could get some levels. We'll see. And next is Eki Thump, Heroes of Law, the Corn Demons, also tied for third. So, he has two injuries here. One is a Bloodletter Demon who's just going to be out for the next game. Not the best thing in the world. And he had one Pit Fighter Cultist with block out for the last game, and now the other one's gotten injured. So he's going to be down one of his Pit Fighter Cultists with block again. He's gotten a level up on a Pit Fighter Cultist and a Bloodletter Demon. Um, you know, he could get a lot of different things since he hasn't taken them yet. Considering he's only got two rerolls and he's got a couple of Pit Fighter Cultists with block, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to take leader on this Pit Fighter Cultist if he gets the chance. And, you know, Bloodletter Demons are they're the guys on the team where you don't have to worry about Frenzy. They can develop in a lot of different ways. They're kind of the do-all pieces on the team. Unfortunately, Bloodthirster still no SPP, which is not good news. I remember he, I think he actually got knocked out at some point during the last game, so I wasn't on the pitch the entire time. But if he wants to keep moving up in the ranks, he really, really wants some SPP on this Bloodthirster. Other than that, so he's got four guys who are leveled up, which is great. But other than that, he's only got two SPP on the team. So these four guys who are going to have levels are probably going to be it for a little while unless he has a really good game. Still, I would say for a team that's pretty much low tier, in my opinion, he's doing quite well for himself. At some point, I have to respect that he can play the team pretty well, even though I, I think it's a bad team. And sixth, Heavy Weapons Gentlemen. He's playing Orcs as well, and he's only got one level so far, which is a Blitzer. But the Blitzer's at 13 SPP, which means he could very easily get his next level up. And he's got Guard, like all the other ones. His SPP spread is pretty reasonable. He's actually got all four black orcs and mvp away from leveling up and this one's just an injury away from leveling up and he's got his blitzer his thrower his lineman all at three so he's actually got a lot of possibilities for level ups and i wouldn't be surprised to come back to this team next week and see a level up or two unfortunately the not necessarily on the blitzers he's got two blitzers who are sitting around at zero spp which is not good they do a lot of the heavy lifting but He's actually 0-2-1, but his team has survived without any huge issues. And he's got good SPP spread, so if anyone in the low tiers is going to make a climb out, I would expect that you know this, this team has a legitimate chance. Next is Gilkey's Humans, Neo Band of the Hawk, which had some injury problems in this last game. So... We have an Ogre with a miss next, which is very, very unfortunate for him. He's been sitting at 5 SPP since the first game, and now he's going to miss one. And a lineman who's got a minus movement, which is unfortunate in as much as he's going to be out for a game. Other than that, he's going to get thrown on the line and be line fodder, I assume. His only level up is a Blitzer with guard still. Um, he's got another Blitzer at 5 and a Thrower at 3. And this ogre that won't be playing next week at 5. So he's been, and I'm sure he'll tell you this himself, he's played a lot of really low scoring games. So that, that's really hurt his level up chances. Um, I mean, he stands a chance. His next game is going to be, I think, a bit of a problem for him. But we'll get into that in the next discussions. He's going to be walking into the next game at 970 TV so we may get some inducements. We'll see. He's definitely the most beat up on, and a lot of it's because this ogre's out for a game. 
And finally, Uratal One's Dwarves have drawn their first game. They have not, they didn't lose again. And he's got to level up on a blocker, which is guard, which is, you know, just what the doctor ordered. Dwarves want a ton of guard running down the pit so their three strength guys can actually get good blocks all over the place. And he's got a pretty good SPP spread, actually. His Troll Slayer's got five, he's got a Blitzer with five, another Blitzer with two, a Runner with three. He's got a couple more blockers that have a chance. So like half his team can get a level up on a MVP. And this Runner can level up if he scores, so there's a lot of good potential level ups coming soon. Unfortunately, his record has not been that good. Um, he, No one's out of it yet. I mean, obviously he's the one who's in eighth place, so he has the worst chances but I think he's still in it and it's going to go a long way towards helping if he can get a good game and get a couple of levels out of the next game or something like that so those are the teams let's look at the matchups for next week our first matchup is going to be six-legged spiders dark elves versus walruses orcs and I say this a lot in the stream, this keeps coming up, but Dark Elves and Orcs play a very similar game to each other. They want to, you know, kind of slowly bash, they're capable of passing if it comes to it. And Walrus just has the really nice skills. Um, his Blitzer with 4 agility is, you know, it's nice. Obviously, every Blitzer on Six-Legged Spider's team has 4 agility. But a couple of guards and a bunch of or a four strength black orcs really mean that he's gonna just pound down the pitch um i mean six-legged spider could do it but i would say this is definitely in favor of walrus the next game is eki thump versus torta this is eki thump's corn demons versus torta's dwarves and i'm th this is going to be a really close game i'm actually predicting a draw for this one um and both teams are going to be stuck with two loners because they have two players injured and both Dwarf Linemen and Pit Fighter Cultists out of the box are horrible, horrible loners to get. But they're very similar in makeup and skills and strength. Obviously, um, the Corn Demons are going to be a little faster than the Dwarves. The Dwarves are going to have more skill than the Corn Demons, but like the, the skills are so similar and the team values are so similar that I just think this one's probably going to end up in a draw. Next is the Sad Pandas Amazons versus Heavy Weapon Gentlemen's Orcs. And just because a Sad Panda's in a tie for first with two wins and a draw, and Heavy Weapons Gentleman is down at no wins, two draws, and a loss, I would give this one to a Sad Panda just because he's um the higher ranked of the two teams, but... Looking at the actual teams and the skill-ups they have, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't be a close game. Despite the fact that Panda's up there, you know, at 2-1-0, and zero, he's got one skill-up. So, both teams are really similar in TV and level-ups, and I don't see a particular reason why it should be, you know, a blowout or anything. So I'm predicting Panda to win just because he's got such a better record, but I'm not going to be surprised at all if this goes as a draw or if Heavy Weapons Gentleman wins. It would not surprise me. And the last one is Gilkey's Humans versus Zero Tall One's Dwarves. Um, these two are way down in the rankings, unfortunately, and even more unfortunately, Gilkey's going to have to deal with some loners and is not going to have his ogre for this game. Gil Gilkey built a bashy human team, and he's not going to have his big guy for the game, which is very unfortunate. Um, again, could be a close game, but I think your tall one's going to win this one just because of all the guys that Gilkey has missing. It's going to be pretty rough on him, but we'll see what happens. And that's it. That's your week three wrap up for the Mr. Hadwick Championship Invitational Season One. Thanks for watching. And keep an eye out for the games. Hopefully we'll see some more on the stream again next time. We actually played three games on the stream last Friday, so that was a lot of fun to watch. So, thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.